Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everyone is well, doing well in this very interesting time that we're having uh, with the worldwide pandemic that's going on right now. I hope everyone's staying safe and doing all that you can to stay safe. So we're in chapter seven. We're going to continue with it. We didn't get to finish it before spring break, and so we're going to make sure we finish it now. It's going to be a pretty short video uh, for what we would have done in class on campus, but I want to get through it pretty quickly because we need to catch up. So. Chapter 7, we've already done a lot of it, but this is basically a rundown of what you're going to see in the chapter. And I encourage you to go through it at a slower pace at a later time by looking at the slideshow that I post in Canvas. So there are simple rules of engagement when you are listening in class, listening and taking notes. So basically you want to do those things that people said do all the time. Or maybe you heard them as a child. Sit up, look ahead, let's get to um, sit close to the front or uh, near the you know, at a good spot in the room where you know you can listen well. So you want to uh, listen with focus. If you can do your best to be calm, it's not great to get to a place. Uh, we can talk about being timely forever. Uh, it's something that uh, maybe all of us struggle with. If you don't, great. Share your tips and share your, share your secrets. But when you get there late, then you're flustered. And have you ever gotten to a class and you're just breathing really hard? and maybe you begin to sweat <laughs> i sweat a lot so maybe you begin to just like you're sitting there and all of a sudden you begin to sweat and your clothes start sticking to you we can go on and talk about that but that's a uh, really embarrassing and you are not focused and so there are certain things you can do to be able to listen uh, with focus in class uh, so you do want to uh, appreciate your instructor's prep time uh, meaning you, you want to show up on time for him or her the, uh, the best that you can. So that is always appreciated by professors. Uh, so there are soft listening skills and there are hard listening skills. Soft listening skills are basically uh, simply being emo emotionally engaged. Uh, the way you actually appear in class, it helps the speaker. Uh, if they're a really good speaker, it won't hurt the speaker. But if they're a novice, uh, it will, or if they're introverted, uh, it will actually bother the speaker. Uh, but what speakers will do is well, they will look for that person who is engaged and they will draw off that energy. I've done that as a speaker and I know that people do that. So I actually, even if I'm not feeling well, I try to put myself in their shoes and pretend to be engaged. <laughs> I've sat in lectures and I've been uh, part of uh, classes where I had no idea what the person was saying, but I wanted to at least help him or her uh, to feel uh, at least uh, respect it. And so I would nod my head and I would do that. Some of you have done that too, I've seen you. And so I appreciate it. It does help the speaker. Hard listening skills, usually those are for classes that are more uh, discussion driven. Uh, our class is kind of semi discussion driven. And so uh, they all, these hard listening skills where we can use critical thinking, analysis, evaluation, use, leave that for the QA section. If a speech is going on, a lot of times there will be a Q&A section at the end. If not, then I hopefully you took notes and so you can evaluate and analyze later. Oftentimes in a paper, that is usually what's coming in a college, college course. So uh, you do want to try to cap capture the main ideas. So just like me on this video, if you're trying to get uh, all the words that I'm saying, even though I feel like I'm talking really fast, but on the group grand scale, I'm probably not the fastest talker, but it would be hard anyway just to get all the words that I'm saying. So you want to get the main idea. Of course, it helps to have the PowerPoint there, but you do want to use shorthand. Use a system that works for you, and we can talk about some systems uh, right now. So there's outlining, which is basically using the basic skeleton, uh, writing on the basic skeleton of what you need to know, what you've heard, and uh, what you want to write. Now, how do you know what is the basic skeleton? What do you, how do you know what are the nuts and bolts of what, what needs to be written down? Well, you, you really don't until maybe a few classes in. Unless you've done a ton of college courses, you kind of have to feel the professor out, kind of have to get used to his or her style. Oftentimes, I would learn what is needed and what is not after the first evaluation, after the first quiz after the first test, after the first assignment, I would say, oh, okay, I included a lot more than maybe this professor was looking for, or I should have included a little bit more. I gotta, I gotta take notes. Maybe I should record class. 
Uh, the Cornell system is an interesting system. Uh, it's more of a visually uh, oriented system. So uh, that I know a lot of students who have used this and have had success with that. Another visually oriented system is uh, the mind map system. You can find these on page 185 and 186 in your textbook. And so those can be really helpful, even if you're not visually oriented, uh, not a visual learner like myself. I'm an all learner, but the, these two systems can be very uh, helpful. Uh, PowerPoint miniatures, guided notes, and parallel note taking. Uh, these get into more uh, technology based uh, note taking. So, your professor may give you pieces of paper with PowerPoint uh, slides on the paper. If you write small, this is great for you. Guided notes. It really helps you to engage and listen to every single word. So, if your professor gives you one of these, uh, it's an advantage because they are pushing you to listen to every single word, even if you're tired and not really focused. It'll help you focus that much more. Parallel note taking, you can use what you've recorded to uh, supplement uh, with uh, note taking outside of class. Uh, use what has been recorded. Maybe you recorded it, maybe the professor posted it as a podcast. But take notes from that also. You don't want to just listen to it, you want to actively listen to it. Timeline notes, great for history students. If you're taking math notes, you want to go step by step, step one, step two, step three, maybe bullet points. Uh, Maybe a number system, of course. How about that for math? So uh, whatever you've been doing for math, if it's worked in the past, great. If not, maybe one of these other systems can be helpful as well. So ask questions. So the old adage goes, there are no dumb questions. Well, that's like that phrase, sticks and stones when I break my bones, the words will never hurt me. Not true, right? So you do want to consider the question. Think critically about the question. Ask this question to yourself under your breath or in using your inner voice, is this a good question? And then ask yourself, is this a good question for this professor? Uh, because sadly, professors have egos just like all of us. And so uh, they could really <laughs> take a turn for the worst uh, toward you. But uh, they want to be professional. If they get a professional, then that's the different issue. But if you feel intimidated by the professor, um, a lot of times that's not the professor's fault, but it may be the professor's fault. Either way, you want to ask the professor outside of class. And what you'll find a lot of times is the professor will, professor will appreciate the question. And you'll be encouraged to ask more questions in class. Um, if you uh, are met with um, unfair criticism, ridicule by asking that question, then that might be something you can take to a higher authority like a dean. So most people in academia are willing to help, I believe. Uh, you have those who maybe should have retired a while ago, or maybe are just in the wrong profession, but I think the vast majority are there to help. They've actually been through the process. They actually enjoy communicating with people. Uh, some of us are introverts like myself, but we still enjoy the communication with people. Uh, so we're not hermits, but we just enjoy communication on a low level, not with thousands of people. Uh, but we're here to help you. We've been through the process. Go ahead and ask us, and uh, we'd be glad to help. So use your lecture notes. The faster you use your lecture, lecture notes, the better that you will be able to uh, remember. Put, them in your long, put the notes in your long-term memory and re reuse that for the test. So if you want to know more about note-taking and listening in class, these are great resources. Uh, these are great videos, and um, I mean they're not you know roller coaster rides, but they're, they're they're interesting, and I think they're very helpful. So remember, you do have individual student conferences coming up, and so if I haven't contacted you yet to reschedule, if we've missed one, then I will be rescheduling. Thanks so much for your patience as we transition. So what's coming up? Notice there's nothing for March 29th. So there's nothing for that date. There are things for April 5th. There are three things. So you have your quiz, my tap packet of the last couple of chapters, and your online engagement discussion. We'll talk about what that is in just a moment. So let's look at the syllabus. Okay, so there's some things that I changed in the syllabus. I just had to change them. We couldn't go on the way we were because the format of this class is geared for an on-campus class. But I had to change some things. For example, in-class participation and attendance, 
not a thing anymore. It's online presence and participation. I'm going to change this word to engagement. Uh, of course, you have individual student conferences, which is something we would have done on campus anyway. Journals, you've done three. They were worth 18 points, but now they're worth 30. And so getting rid of that, your Myers-Briggs assessment, I had to add 40 points to that to even out at 1,000 points. So online engagement discussions, those are basically just your discussions. They were originally called discussion posts and responses. But now there are six uh, original posts and responses that you should uh, uh, do. And so there are 10 points apiece, so that brings it up to 60 points. And so 1,000 points total for the class. So if we go down here to look at what is actually due and when it's due, um, I took the color scheme away, at least on this video. There'll be color scheme if you're if you are visually oriented and if that helps. If it doesn't, let me know because I really don't know what I'm doing with colors because I don't need I don't like the colors. <laughs> but people say they're helpful. So uh, we had the uh, interesting spring break, and so here we are trying to continue online. Nothing due on the 29th, but we have a lot of things due on the 5th. So take advantage of this time. I do want to talk about uh, your OEDs, your OEDs, or the online engagement discussions. And so notice there's one for each chapter. There's one for chapter eight, or one for chapter nine, which will include some stuff from chapter seven. I don't want us to uh, miss that. There's one for chapter nine here, OED three, OED four, and so forth. So let's look at that. If we can look in Canvas, this is your student view. You can actually see this uh, now if you've seen this on the 26th or later uh, before it's due. Uh, so what are you asked to do? Please answer the following questions and please hit this. Please limit your responses to approximately 50 to 75 words. I'm actually going to change this to 25 to 50 words uh, per question. I may even keep it at 25. Uh, I'm relatively new at doing online discussions, so I'm trying to fill out exactly what works. But just as you don't have time to write uh, 15 long papers in one day, I don't have time to read all of them in one day. So I want to get your feedback faster than I have uh, been doing. So I may just take this out to about 25. And in about, um, about 25 words or maybe less, you want to respond to a post. You can use more, of course, uh, but I don't want you to feel like you need to write an entire paper. This is, a, this is an academic. Uh, pursuit. So you do want to be uh, cordial and you do want to be uh, scholarly in your posts and in your responses. Capital set, capital letters at the beginning of sentences, using correct punctuation, meaning periods or questions at the end of your statements, end of your sentences. So please send your discussion with a question or two about something that you're still unsure about uh, concerning a topic, if it is a topic that uh, you have more questions about. I won't require you to necessarily uh, post a question, but this is a good practice. It is a good idea to practice this for critical thinking purposes. Uh, your response. Um, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Uh, you should probably have just at least one sentence uh, and respond to at least two different people. Right? So here are some examples. We've already done this in class, but just to remind you, uh, you could address someone, hi, so-and-so. This is an interesting comment about, I think, maybe you agree or maybe you disagree. That's a good observation. I respectfully disagree, though. I tend to think of it like this. Those of you who posted already did a great, excellent job. Keep up the good work. So that's all I have for this video right now. Uh, be sure to uh, check Canvas frequently. What you see here will look different. I am going to reorganize this by weeks because that's how online students uh, are basically uh, taught to think. What's this week? What's next week? What's the week coming? What's for, when is the final? So I'm going to organize it by week so you can better follow as we uh, engage online. Thanks so much. Adios.